Sarah Boone's new lawyer, James Owen, represented her for the first time in court yesterday. And although we had some of our questions answered, he actually called into court TV yesterday and had his first interview. So we're going to go ahead and listen. So who would believe in Sarah Boone? Well, someone did step forward to take this case. Yes, an attorney in Florida. Joining me by phone, Sarah Boone's ninth attorney, James Owens. James, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thanks, Vinny, for having me. Okay, the first question I know everyone's asking you, why? Why did you take this case, James? Uh, well, you know, I watch uh, a lot of um, YouTube and uh, a lot of, I watch a lot of court TV and I was, I've been following this case uh, just like all the other true crime people do and, um, you know, kept, kept watching it being delayed and the lawyers being switched and switched and switched and then saw that um, the judge got fed up and ruled that she had forfeited her right to a court-appointed counsel. And so that's a rare event. You know, um, as lawyers, we know that, you know, everybody has a right to a lawyer, a court-appointed lawyer, if you can't afford one. So um, on a serious charge, a felony, in this case, it was a murder, uh, for the judge to revoke that right was, was a serious decision on his part. I, you know, I don't disagree. I respect the court's decision, but that left her um, facing a murder charge without a lawyer, which is unheard of, I think. And so, you know, I watched for a while and then I, I saw the ad on your show. And the ad he's talking about, if you did not see it, is Sarah actually did a handwritten letter that she had sent out. So the courts got it, but also it was put up on different social media platforms asking somebody to represent her because she felt like she needed somebody and although the eight other attorneys didn't work out she still wanted one and um i think that you had said something implying hey who's gonna who's gonna take the case what lawyer in florida is gonna pick up the torch so to speak and I think you had somebody on, maybe it was a lawyer from the Northeast, and I think I remember that lawyer saying, man, if I was a license in Florida, I'd take the case, you know, under that scenario, because she, she really needs a lawyer. Everybody needs a lawyer. And so the ad came out, and I, I sat there and waited for three or four weeks. I can't remember now how long I waited, but I was thinking that a lawyer out of Orlando would pick up the case. Uh, somebody... Yeah, so Owens is in Milton, Florida, so he's not really close to her. And like he said, he was assuming that some Orlando attorney would pick it up, but then nobody would. Would think, hey, this is not right. There's no way she's going to get a fair trial representing herself. Um, it's unfair. But there's a gap in the system. The judge made the decision based on her conduct that she had forfeited a right to a lawyer. I believe that's where the private sector has got to step in. Somebody in the private sector in that situation, and it's rare, should step in. So I, like I say, I waited. Nobody uh, responded in the local area. So I just happened to have a case down in Hillsborough County that I was going to down in Tampa. And so I knew I was scheduled for court down there. So about a week before that, I sent her a letter and she had a third party contact me to- I really want to know who the third party is. Is it Brian or maybe her other brother that hasn't been in legal problems? Um, at this point, I would have to imagine that many people old friends don't want anything to do with her. So it'd be interesting to know who the third party is. I guess check me out to see if I was legitimate. And Well, I think everyone's been you know, checking you out in the last couple of days, and everybody knows you are absolutely legitimate, James. I mean, you have well, quite well, a history. I, you know, of, I've been doing it a long time. I've been yeah. doing it a long time. So, so anyway, she reached out to me, and then a couple of days later, Sarah called me from the jail. Okay. 
So my guesses were wrong. He said she reached out and then later talked to Sarah. So it's a girl. So maybe she still has a friend or two that is willing to help her out since we know that her parents have died and her grandparents have died and there's really no other family um, that she's close to. In Orange County, in Orlando. And we talked for a little bit and I explained to her that I was coming down that Wednesday, but I'd come down early and spend Tuesday talking to her and she agreed. So I drove down Monday after work Tuesday well, morning, can you describe I went to the that meeting with, without, you know, I know attorney-client uh, um, communications uh, is, is off limits, but how, how would you describe that meeting to someone? Like, was it different the, than meeting other clients meeting? for the first time? The first meeting? Yeah. Um, no, it was, you know, it was a four-hour meeting. That's I usually don't meeting. meet with clients in the jail for that long, so I, I gave her a chance to talk and um, just listened. For a long time, she had a lot to say. Obviously, she's been in jail for four years. And, you know, we had a good meeting. Just, again, I think she has trust issues because she felt like she did have some good lawyers that were on her case and just withdrew because they would get in some arguments about issues, I guess. And so she said they wouldn't even tell her anything at the jail. But the next thing you know, she would, you know, be sent to court and the, the lawyer would be had filed a motion to withdraw so she she didn't you know trust the lawyers because she didn't she didn't know who to trust she'd been with so many so a lot of it was just trying to build trust with her um after she talked a little bit i told her a little bit about myself so really feeling each other out and trying to build some kind of rapport was the first meeting which was about four hours but i think early on in the case i was able to persuade her that I knew what I was talking about because I was prepared. When I got there, I was prepared and I played part of that four hours. I played the prosecutor and I pulled out the jury instructions and I made an argument as a prosecutor would make to a jury. And I had her sit there and listen to it. And I think that was effective. I don't think she had anybody ever do that to her and explain it to her that way of how it would, how it would, you know, play out wow. in court. And that, that got her attention and um you know initially i was going down there now let, let me tell you my, my initial thought going down there was this she didn't have a lawyer and once that happens once they're pro se then you know as well as i do that all these cases are up for negotiation um plea plea agreements are pretty much on the table at any time and judges judges recommend the courts recommend you know you try to work cases out the majority of the vast majority of cases get worked out with pleas so you know i talked to her about that and that was my intent i'd call the prosecutor and told her i told him i was coming down there uh to speak with her ahead of time and he wanted me to file some kind of a notice of appearance and i didn't want to do that i wasn't ready to take on the case so I got her to sign a document essentially saying, hey, I would like, I don't want to negotiate directly with you, state attorney. I would like for James Owens to to work just to talk to you. And so she signed that, and I did uh, for a couple of days talk to the prosecutor. I was trying to resolve it. Right. And, and I felt like I felt like the judge is six and a half a trial, a three-week trial with a pro se defendant. Prosecutor is six and a half a trial with a three-week trial with a pro se defendant. It was not going to be fair. Okay, so he wanted to come in and he wanted to get her to have a deal and maybe not move forward with the trial, just get something um, solidified that would push her, that she would agree with, into an agreement with the state. And I felt like they might be in a posture to try to negotiate something that would be doable. Um, so uh, that was my f first intent, was not to handle the case, not to try the case. If we got something worked out, then I would file a notice of appearance, and we'd set it for a court date to resolve it. That so didn't that happen, was my though. First... No, it didn't. And, uh, you know, I left that four-hour meeting. I went to Tampa the next day, had court, and then turns out the investigator that had been assigned to the pro se litigant, Sarah Boone, he was meeting with her 
uh, that, that evening at 7, so I asked if I could just join. So I came back over and spent about an hour and a half with her and Billy Lane, the investigator. And we talked some more, and I was convinced that uh, there was going to be no plea bargaining. So I, I told her I was not representing her, and I was leaving. And I, I emailed the prosecutor or called the prosecutor and said, look, we, we've, you know, we've reached an impasse. Uh, there's no agreement, and I'm not going to be representing her. And I went home. And um, I want to say a couple of days later, Sarah called me, and we talked some more. And I told her I, I just – that you know, Vinny, you know. So, But, but at this point, she's now reaching out to you because she, she wants James Owens to represent her. To be fair, she just wanted somebody to represent her. And maybe they did have a connection, and maybe she did trust him. But she also had nobody else lining up. So she, she's she been desperate. Well, we, you know, we did connect. We did connect. And I think she was overwhelmed being her own lawyer. She was stressed out. Yeah. She had all this discovery that she was trying to go over. She didn't know what she was doing. She didn't know the rules of procedure, rules of evidence. And she had told the judge, I think they'd had a couple of hearings on some issues and she said judge this is not fair i don't know what i'm doing and the judge kept saying well i'm sorry ma'am but this is your position so she i think she was just thankful that i came down to see her we had you know some good meetings so i think she really needed some help so i think that was partly to do with it but there were still some issues because she was i think she was let down because i said i wasn't going to represent her right so we got off the phone I still said I wasn't committed to it, but I was thinking about it. But as you know, secondary murder trial, and the judge had set a firm date for October the 7th, which is really difficult to do. I mean, you pretty much have to shut down your practice for 30 days or six yeah, weeks. Yeah, absolutely. And just to try to catch up and just be – which is essentially what I'm having to do. Now uh, – uh, well, so, you've seen you've seen the body cam, all the interrogation videos, the nine one one call, and then of course the, the the cell video. It starts there, right? But in, in terms of getting prepared in thirty days for this trial, uh, that's you know four years old, and a lot of things have happened. Um, can you do it? And and will you be ready? Well, I'm gonna do my best with the time I've got left. That's all I can do. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some help. I've got to get some staff helping me. I've got a couple of lawyers that are buddies of mine that have offered their help. So, um, I you know, should send that, that lawyer to, from the Northeast down to help you. Joseph Krauski is, is the guy. Yeah. We'll, we'll let him know that, that he's the reason that you jumped in the case. He may, he may fly down there to help you. He's up in Boston. Okay. It's cold. He may come okay. down and help and you. I've got, yeah, that'd be great. And I've got two lawyers that, like I say, I think are going to help me are pretty much committed to it. They're friends of mine and I trust them and they, they want to help me. And they realized, I thought the case was going to be continued. I, I respect the judge's decision, but I really, really thought. Let, let me ask you this. Have, have you spoken to any of the other eight? Yes. I spoke to Ms. Cashman, who was the last lawyer that had it. I've tried to sp uh, speak to Mr. Padilla out of Miami. He's the one that had the case initially. He had it for about two years, maybe two and a half years. He did most of the discovery, took most of the depositions. I think they were pretty much ready for trial or getting close, and he withdrew. But I've tried to call him a couple of times. Um, I know he's been in a double homicide. And I hope that he will eventually talk to Owens. Um, as he said, he had the most knowledge and the ins and outs of this case because he had, it, he had the case for almost two years. So he would be the one to really talk to. So hopefully within a few days they can somehow connect i mean with the trial being only 30 days away it really doesn't give a lot of time for owens to prepare and he needs all the help he can get so it can be a fair trial everybody deserves a fair trial and he's stepping in at the last minute couldn't get the continuance so he really needs some help case they just got out of but i i never was able to speak with him and um, you're doing this um Pro pro bono? I, mean, I don't think she has no, much kit. No. You get, you, what are you getting? Well, you know, Sarah's got to pay me back one day. Okay. Um, okay. That that was the agreement I had. I didn't want to. I wanted her to understand that she. So they are now talking about the pro bono, and in court, 
it had seemed that he was doing it pro bono. I think that it's being um, said in such a way to imply that uh, because he isn't getting paid and he's not getting paid through the trial or anything. So I think considering it a pro bono is maybe the easiest way, but no, he's saying that they have a deal that she understands that at some point she has to start making payments, even if they're small. Um, but I would still say it leans on the pro bono side because if she never gets out of jail, he's not going to get paid from her. You know, she, she needs to be self-reliant and she needs to be responsible for fees. I've got a bunch of clients that are paying me and some of them only pay 50 bucks a month. And, uh, but it's, it's important to me. It's important to them, you know, that we have an arrangement, um, to make payments. And that's what I told her. Do you um, think, I, I feel, do you think she needs to tell her story in the courtroom? No. Well, Sarah is a unique individual. I don't know. Um, in a criminal case, it's the time to tell her whole story. I think if it's necessary, uh, she'll take the stand. We're just going to see how the case plays out. Um, I liked his long pause of choosing his words wisely. Um, does Sarah need to tell her story up on the stand? No. I think that she is an unlikable character, um, the way that she conducts herself. I mean, we've seen police body cam footage. We've, you know, seen her letters. She comes across a certain way, and I think she would only be a detriment to her trial. You know, we'll make that decision when the time comes. Um, of course, she's got a lot to say. She's filed a lot of pleadings, a lot of letters. We've, Some we've seen them. Trust me, we 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 yeah. see. So so James, this is what I want to do. Um, I want to stay in contact with you, and, and we are legitimately going to reach out uh, to Joseph Krauski to see if he is willing to get down there if he needs an extra hand. But um, also wanted to let you know that I wanted to let you go now because I know you've got some discovery. You got a couple more hours tonight. You can jump in there and and as you get ready for this. But uh, I hope that uh, we can reach out to you as we get closer and closer to the trial and grab a couple minutes of your time. Thanks, Vinny. All Appreciate right. you. James Owens, like, folks, this is how the system works. It doesn't work if lawyers just look away and don't jump in like this. Everyone, whether you believe they're guilty or not guilty, doesn't matter. Without defense attorneys stepping in like James Owens is in this case, the whole system crumbles. Yeah, I, I agree with Vinny. Um, it is amazing that he jumped in because to every lawyer in the area, nobody wanted to even get close to that case. Um, and it, it really needed to be done. She needs representation. She needs a fair trial. Um, you know, obviously the general public already has their view on the case and uh, opinion on Sarah. Um, but no, she deserves to have a lawyer if she wants one. And I think that was the right thing to do. I wonder how she's going to treat him, though. Um, you know, with other lawyers, she hasn't been very kind to them. And Owens really is stepping in the last minute, basically on the goodness of his heart, and because he really feels it's the right thing to do. So I hope for his point of view that everything with her runs smoothly and that she's kind to him because he's taking on something in such a short amount of time that has to be so stressful and difficult. So good for him.